Validity. You might not be over familiar with the word, and students often get confused by the term, but you know what it means. Asking if something has validity is fundamentally asking if it's true. Is it accurate? Can I believe in it? Question of validity is always important in science, but especially in a science like psychology where there is so much potential for bias. Researchers have to carefully consider the validity of their findings by thinking carefully about how they created their results, and if their results really show something true about behaviour generally. So in this video we're going to discuss the different types of validity, how to assess validity and how to improve validity. Psychboost.com, over 170 videos to help you with your qualification, and Patreon supporters can access bonus resources, tutorial videos, and the Discord channel. The distinction between internal and external validity. Validity in psychological research is asking a question about the accuracy, or truth, of an observed effect that we found through our experimentation, observation, or investigation. When asking if a psychological finding genuinely describes behaviour, researchers consider both the internal validity and external validity of their findings. Questioning internal validity is asking if the change the researcher made in the independent variable was actually the factor that produced the observed change in the dependent variable, and not some third factor, so perhaps a confounding variable. So really questioning internal validity is asking if the study was well conducted with sufficient controls. Questioning external validity is asking if the findings gained in an experimental condition, or observed of a certain group, can be accurately generalised beyond that situation to the real world of human behaviour, which may have many more complex variables and a different and more diverse population than what was included in the study. Even if the study was well conducted, if it doesn't tell us about human behaviour outside of that particular experimental condition, well, it's got little value. Internal validity. Internal validity is about causality. Did the change in the independent variable actually produce the change in the dependent variable? Or was it something else? Examples of when an experiment would lack internal validity are when the results are biased, such as social desirability bias, the participant wanting to be seen in a positive way. Demand characteristics, the participants wanted to give the researcher the results they think the researcher wants. Investigator effects, when the characteristics or behaviour of the researcher influences the findings, and conscious or unconscious researcher bias, with the researcher interacting with the participants or interpreting their behaviour differently depending on what condition they're in, usually in a way that will produce results that supports their research hypothesis. We can also say a study lacks internal validity if it's been poorly conducted, like participant variables not being controlled, or by not using standardised procedures. These examples are all ways that the ultimate change in the dependent variable may not be due to the manipulation of the independent variable, but some other factor. If the study is conducted in a way that we're unsure that it was the independent variable that caused the change in the independent variable, then the results lack internal validity and are effectively meaningless. External validity. External validity considers if we can generalise the findings. For example, the setting of the study, how close to normal behaviour the task set is, and when the study was conducted, and who the study was conducted on. If any of these are significantly different to the real world, we can suggest that the findings lack external validity. Ecological validity is considering if the findings from the study in one setting can be generalised to other settings. Now, it is a criticism often given to laboratory studies, as behaviour might be particularly unusual in a location that is very strange to the participants, and clearly set up for an experiment. But actually, ecological validity is a concern no matter where the study is set. For example, your behaviour might vary considerably from when you're at school, out shopping, or at a sports match. We may not be able to generalise your behaviour to all settings from observing you in just one setting. Mundane realism is how close to real life or naturalistic the task set is. A task closer to what the participants are used to performing in real life should give a more valid indication of their performance than a task that's strange to the participant. Examples of studies with low mundane realism are common in memory research, with cognitive psychologists testing the limits of memory with really unusual tasks, like remembering nonsense three-letter combinations. While showing interesting results, this really isn't how memory is used by most people every day. We consider population validity when we generalise our findings from our sample to the broader population. And this can be problematic if the population is not represented in the sample. This type of validity often has links to gender and culture bias. It's a big problem in psychological research. Many older studies excluded women from their samples, assuming the results would be the same. 
And even today, most studies are conducted on young Westerners, often psychology students, and then publishing this research claiming to show evidence of typical human behaviour. Temporal validity is concerned with if a finding can be applied across time. Many older studies were conducted when politics, society and technology were very different. Some older studies, maybe on areas like obedience, gender identity and relationship formation, might be outdated and might not be an accurate explanation of modern human behaviour today. How to assess validity. Validity can be assessed by the researcher in a number of ways. I'm going to mention a few validity terms in this section. Now for AQA level, you can only be asked directly about face validity and concurrent validity. But the other terms you can use if you're confident in your psychology essays, especially if you want to be precise when talking about validity. By far the simplest way to assess validity is to consider whether the measure of behaviour has face validity. Face validity is asking if the measure looks like it's measuring what it's intending to measure. Now, for example, testing a participant's ability to remember their times table would lack face validity if the researcher used it as a measure of their general ability with maths. Because even though it's part of mathematics, it's more of a memorization skill than showing mathematical ability. We can have confidence in the validity of a test if we can compare the data from the test to another measurement and find a correlation. We call this criterion validity, matching the scores gained onto another criteria, which just means a standard to measure against. There are two types of criterion validity, concurrent and predictive. Concurrent validity is using an old version of a test. So say for example, we have developed a new IQ test and we have an older established test. We'd want someone who scores highly on the new test to have a similar score on the old test. We would say there's high concurrent validity when there's a close agreement between the data produced by the new test compared to the established test of the same thing. We can measure how closely they are by a test of correlation. And we would say there's a close correlation of the two sets of data when it's 0.8 correlation or higher. Predictive validity is when we're able to give an accurate prediction based on the results of a measure. So for example, GCSE results have good predictive validity for A-level performance, and universities assume A-level results have good predictive validity in students' ability to perform at degree level, which is why they have A-level requirements. How to improve validity. As internal validity is about confirming a cause and effect relationship between the IV and DV by excluding extraneous variables, then techniques for controlling a study we covered in the variables video random allocation, standard procedures, counterbalancing, single and double blind, and effective use of the peer review system, should reduce the chance that the results themselves are due to issues like bias and poorly controlled experiments. External validity can be improved mainly through replication. The experimental procedure can be repeated in multiple environmental settings, demonstrating ecological validity if the findings are consistent. The experimental procedure can be repeated with other demographics to improve population validity, or by including a diverse sample the first time. And temporal validity can be improved by a modern day replication. We could consider Milgram improve the ecological validity of his studies on obedience by showing the authority figure was still generally obeyed even in a rundown office. And replications of Ainsworth in other cultures showed a broadly similar pattern of infant attachment worldwide, demonstrating population validity. So that was validity. I have six tutorial videos covering the 2017, 18 and 19 AS and A-level research method sections. These videos have worked examples to every question and are full of exam tips. Patrons at the neural level and above can access these and many more hours of exam tutorial videos, as well as over 100 printable resources from across the A-level over on psychboost.com. I do want to thank all the students and teachers who have supported Psychboost over on Patreon during the development of the research methods unit. It's their support that allows me to teach part-time so I can make Psychboost on YouTube for everyone. I also want to give a special shout out to the patrons who support me at the developer level. So thanks to them and I'll see you all in the next Research Methods video, Features of Psychology as a Science. <laughs>